welcome to The Shift Flow. I am Danny, And I'm Mo. This is where practical advice meets spiritual guidance. We're two individuals with the joint mission of bringing light, love, and healing to the collective consciousness. This container we've created is an incredibly safe space for us all to have conversations which lead us toward liberation, acceptance, and radical love of self. So if you found this podcast, if by no accident, you've been guided here because there's a part of you who's ready to stop making excuses and start living the life you've always imagined. Yes. So join us here every Thursday. We are so excited to have you. We welcome you here with open arms and to your new community. Let's go. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Before you go into this episode, we have a quick message for you. So upon edit... We decided this was really a deep conversation. It went much longer than we expected. We almost chatted for two hours. So we decided to break this episode up into two parts. And also next week, you'll get uh, kind of a really fun reflection experience that, that we want to share with each other and with you. So we will be recording our reflections after listening to this entire podcast after sharing some very vulnerable moments and being very open and uh you know seeing where we're at next week so a little live check-in for you so we'll do that next week and get to the second part of this episode and i hope you guys enjoy it well 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 good to see your shining face today (laughs) how are you doing today mo fill me in and fill the podcast listeners in where are you at right now well, thanks for noticing my shiny face. Yeah, I put highlighter on for you today. For those who are watching Sparkle. on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's very, like, honestly, I put a lot on. I kind of feel like my face looks dry. <laughs> oh, you look amazing. That's so, that's so, that's so nice that I look uh, shiny. Uh, shiny. So today I'm feeling shiny um, <laughs> to start. Uh, you know what, honestly, my energy is? I'm starting my period, like, any day now. Mm-hmm. And I'm very, like, ready to cry and giggle mm-hmm. and, um, like, it, it's, but it's, it's also, like, in a very nurturing, I feel like in a yeah. very mother vibe right now. Like, I feel like a mother, you know? Yeah. You <laughs> so, are a mother. Yeah, like, just, like, in a very feminine space and just, like, very right. nurturing and, and those are the kinds of activities I've been drawn towards, so... Um, what's beautiful about this time though, and we talked a little bit about this, like back and forth yesterday is that I also feel really good about it and relaxed. And I, I, because normally it says a lot about my nervous system history for the record in the past, when I'm in these modes, uh, I, I haven't really first allowed myself to do so because it, I have felt like society has called me very hard toward the masculine energies of do, 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 go, 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 run, 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 don't stop, don't stop, keep right. producing, keep producing. And um, and, and it, it doesn't resonate with me in this moment, and I don't feel bullied by a <laughs> part of my mind. It's right. beautiful. I'm, you know, so I'm just like, I have moments of, of like, ah, should I be doing something else, you know, or should I be going faster? But it also yeah. feels so nice to recognize that, that is not the voice to listen to yeah. either. Do you know what I mean? So it's, um, that's kind of where I'm at. So it's, it's, you know, you're going to get a little different mode today, probably. <laughs> so. And I think that's a beautiful way to talk about or a be- beautiful segue into like, we are multifaceted, multidimensional beings. Yeah. We have so many sides to us and we have so many different phases and energies and personalities. I mean, you and I were going into different, um, <laughs> we were going into different uh, accents yesterday and I was doing the same with another person in my life and just like having fun with that and allowing yeah. yourself to kind of ebb and flow in the different emotions that we experience continuously on and off as a human being. I think yeah. that's a gift. To be able to recognize you have these shifts, you have these flows, and Mm -hmm. you can ebb and flow between all of them and recognize it prior and know when you're being led into it and then surrendering to it when you're in it. Does that make sense? It absolutely does. And and I love that you say that because 
I, I think the recognition of what's happening is huge. Oh my yeah, God. It took, me, you. it took me a very long time. And honestly, I, it, it happens now. It used to happen and, and I wouldn't, there would be a lot of resistance and I wouldn't really know yeah. what was going on. I would think something was happening or like, I don't know, something's off with me, you know, dramatic. Yeah. Um, we and are now it's like, the drama this queen. is good. Yeah. This is like, this is good. And now, but also it kind of goes to what we talked about earlier. You kind of have to know, you know, the, the terms and the definitions, uh, right. at first and you, you learn things that way. And even if it doesn't resonate, it's coming. So, um, you know, keep doing the work. It really is just a call to keep doing the work because this is a thing that's beautiful to experience. The level that your awareness is at, my girl. The <laughs> level you. of your awareness is so sexy. Oh my god, thank wow. you. Wow. It's no thank wonder you. you're glowing. Um and <laughs> just for any women that have cycles that are listening to this, right, right now, it's actually and I'm so excited to to do that whole podcast about yes. this focus. But it's actually super normal right when you right when you're about to start your your period to become number one you want to nest so you become very nurturing but very mother you start to clean and organize your space um, unconsciously your hormones are actually directing you oh yeah i'm I'm prepping your physical body is prepping to release this egg that is going to shed because it's it hasn't been fertilized and then you're like energetic and physical body is prepping outside of yourself to create a really safe, clean, organized space because you know, you're going to be nesting and resting. So you'll find yourself like, and and we can talk about all the different phases on this other podcast. You'll find yourself like cleaning and organizing. And that's how you know, you're like, Oh wait, (laughs) yeah. Oh wait. I feel like really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It starts with a D feeling really, Domestic, domestic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It took me a minute too. I've been saying that literally the last few days. The best, the domestic. domestic. <laughs> yeah. So you're like yeah. exact doing exactly what you're supposed to be, and thank you for yeah. being transparent because this is us being human. So many people yeah. think like. I have to be one level all the time. I have to be this exact same state the whole time thinking these exact same spots. That yeah. is not the reality of being human and living the life that we live and living in the society that we live in. Yeah. We ebb and flow just like nature. It's constantly changing. So are you yeah. embrace that Roll with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So thank you for sharing yeah. that. Well, and thank you for saying that. That was really beautiful and hopefully uh, brings awareness to others because I think also I would just add one thing and then I, I want to check in on you. So we'll stay with you, girl. Okay. Um, so what? But, uh, I know, I know. I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I will also say when you do activities that don't, you'll notice what doesn't feel in alignment. You know, because there have been multiple times that I, I started doing certain tasks that were like more in a masculine space and I just was not, ha- I mean, it was like take them forever. It like is painful to do it. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this is, you know, so, so knowing how to redirect and be like, what can I do right now that, you know, helps me feel like I'm getting done what I'm feeling like I want to get done and just honors what my body needs. So it's, um, I, you know, just that could help with your awareness practice. So yeah. Anyway, girl, how are you? What's new? Where do I begin? Oh, I know. This is so um, I love how I always pick up the mic when it's going to be intense. <laughs> I'm like, I love it. let me get a little bit closer. So, yeah. let me tell you. Um, so, I took about a week and a half off of work. Yeah. And it was much needed. So, I've been in Utah for, since like the end of October. So, yeah, a little over three months, right? And I'm about to venture off into my new journey into um, South America, into Colombia, stopping in Austin on the way to see multiple people in my soul fam. Um, but Austin has a really, really big place in my heart. There's a lot of really intentional, loving, spiritual community there and a lot of opportunity for me and my business and, and for love and otherwise. Um, so <laughs> I yeah. took a week and a half off. And there is this, it's, it's hard to even say new connection because 
me and this person to a lot of fucking peas in a pod. Like yeah. there's no, we've known each other f- for so many, so many lives, so many lives, so yeah. many lifetimes. And so I went down to Arizona and, um, I'll try to keep this brief, but essentially I saw a lot of family. I saw a lot of friends. I saw a lot of, um, I saw him. I'm also on my period, by the way. Oh, really? <laughs> I started on the full moon. So there will be oh my emotions gosh, how amazing. for me. Yeah. There will be, right? Right? Yeah. There will be emotions for me as well. Um, a lot of gratitude and overwhelm of love. And, yeah. And releasing of old wounds and old traumas yeah. from previous relationships, previous family dynamics. And that was, I don't know if you know this, but that was like, the final closing of the chapter of Arizona for me. Wow. Yeah. And I had a feeling that didn't fully mm-hmm. have confirmation. Yeah. That's me. what I love about our connection is we have that, like we just know with yeah. each other, even if we don't vocalize it and the most significant people in my life, I have that, you know, it's like this trust, this knowing this energetic support, even though it's not necessarily discussed. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, it was like, see my mom and I had such a beautiful conversation with her oh, about, cool. you know, where I'm at with my relationship with Diego, who is that, that flame, that really intense and ended up being dark connection, with Costa Rica, um, had a conversation with her about that. And she was so supportive. And she, oh it was almost like she understood my spiritual vernacular when I was speaking to her about it. I was like, wow. has that so, happened before? No, no. So wow. there were these really interesting things that were happening. I saw my brother and I saw his daughter and, oh. um, we like ran around the playground together and my brother was asking me about my life and though it wasn't really like super intentional and I was still like a little bit uncomfortable for him, I feel. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was trying it was effort yeah and yeah um i remember picking up little brooklyn and giving her like a big hug and she calls me auntie danny (laughs) (laughs) my brother said give her a hug like you're not gonna see her for a while and it just like broke my heart um because she's getting to that age that she's starting to remember me. Yeah, and yeah. so that happened. And there were just like, my cousin had a little bit of a snap at me the day I landed. And then she ended up apologizing and taking ownership. Wow. Wow. wow that's I, great. Yeah. And that never happens with her. Yeah. I mean, her and yeah. I, we have a, a very interesting dynamic going way back. <laughs> yeah. And, um, it was just so many beautiful, very beautiful like endings of cycles almost and like yeah. newness and new positive energy just being sucked into my life that it yeah. was overwhelming to the point of I didn't think this would ever happen finding this level yes. of acceptance um from my family and just this level of love and support even though it's not like to a specific caliber that I desire it's still much more so than it ever has been and okay. just seeing some of my soul sisters in Arizona and then girl <laughs> this man yeah his friends they're all nurses okay and like healers and coaches in their own way and he's work he's starting two new businesses in that arena that work yeah um and they are the imagine being around a bunch of dandies and most oh yay i would love that oh <laughs> right <laughs> open-hearted funny oh, as fuck oh. super supportive super giving super loving super expressive i was That's around amazing. a group of like 10 to 20 of them all weekend for oh, New years yeah and we went to this festival i haven't been to a festival in a while and i remember just just thinking back I remember like previous festivals that I went to where I just would like, my body would hurt and I'd be like feeling terrible the next day. And it was the complete opposite of that because of the people I was with and the amount of love that was in that household and in that group. 
one of my best friends. She's like one of my little mentees, like a little sis. She came out from California. She got to experience that too. And she's going through, she's 23. So she's going through a point in her life where she's shedding all of her old toxic relationships. Wow. Yeah. And then she was exposed to these, I have had chills this whole time. She was exposed to these (laughs) super positive, loving relationships. And so with all of that love, we feel like we quantum jumped into 2023. Oh, that's amazing. She just texted me today. She's like, I feel like I quantum jumped into 2023 energetically. Everything that used to bother me is yeah. like right off my back. Dude, that's amazing. Nothing matters. Like, mm-hmm. And him and I, we did a lot of really deep healing work. When you come yeah. into union, when you come into connection with somebody that is of your same vibrational stature, like your same soul frequency, frequency. We just resonate. We vibrate the same. We offer the same. We speak the same. That opens. That helps you to purge a lot of old stuff. So there was also a lot of really deep healing work that we did, and I. It took me about a week. Like last week, I had to chill a little bit. It took me about a week up until yesterday to bounce back. Wow. So. To answer your question, <laughs> sorry about that. No, to answer your I, question, I, seriously, it's great. I love every second of it. Yeah, you had to describe it that way, <laughs> right? It's like I want to yeah. show you guys all of these pieces and all of the essential parts that matter in order for you to feel this good. Yeah, and one of yeah. that, one of those is community. One of those is connection, and one of those is yeah. understanding, and one of those is support, and love. I was wrapped in a blanket of love. I was in a daze for a whole week, you know, and I am now feeling like the integration of of those activations, like starting to settle and I'm starting to sink back into myself. And I'm just in this state of flow. Yeah. Like I'm ready for everything that we're creating. And I'm also relaxed and in this state of flow and allowing it to allowing myself to receive instead of forcing. Yeah. So. That's amazing. Wow. What a, like seriously though, I have to agree. That whole story feels like a really beautiful way to jump into right. 2023 yes. with, with exactly the right kind of energy, you know, mm-hmm. and those types of things are so huge because you know, it, if, it's like everything else everyone always says is what you need to be really healthy, you know, enough sleep yeah. and all of, all of these things, right? To have exactly the kind of energy you need to live the life you want to have, to have the kind of energy you need for that. I think that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. Seriously. Yeah. And I'm excited just to see how all these new relationships, you know, yeah. all of them. All I mean, of obviously them. one in particular, I'm like really excited to see how that unfolds. <laughs> Yes, um, because too. it's, it's very beautiful. And I, but, but then again, too, everybody else, I mean, there's just a whole lot of people when you make those types of connections, especially in that way, those are friends for life. Yeah. You have like 20 new friends for life. Yes. How cool is that? 100%. And it's just like one week later, like your life changed like that. Yes. And so they cool. are travel nurses. So they yeah. live like a very transient lifestyle similar to mine. Yeah. So they're like, Oh, we're going to be in um, Seattle. Come there. We're going to be in Austin. Come there. We're going to be yeah. here. Come there. We're going to come meet you in Columbia. I'm like, yes. And That's so there's great. one thing that I will never forget that one of the guys said, because like I said, they all love to travel too. But he said, traveling and exploring is really great. But community that really sees you once you find that you're always going to be trying to make your way back to it yeah and so like leading into this conversation today we're going to be talking about the spiritual journey and a lot of that has to do with community right finding the right community finding like-minded individuals that support you maybe don't understand every single thing that you believe or that you're interested in but support you and love you regardless and i'm curious for you mo how that is for you right now with your community and your spiritual journey yeah so where to be uh so well okay few questions first question uh spiritual community 
my spiritual community exists online. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, that's like, super normal. And and it's uh and and it's I, you know when I'm ready for oh I am here it goes get ready everybody it's dark early um <laughs> um you know for me I crave I, I know right I will oh. spit out my water <laughs> um you know I really crave to be around um I I would love to have a community that I can be with in person. Um, I, I do crave that. And, and you know what? We have some shifts happening in our life that all share soon. There are developments happening, right? Um, so, uh, <laughs> always, right? And, um, yeah, so I guess, so to start, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for my community that exists online because yeah. this is, you know, this is one of the ways that I found my way to you, for example. So yeah. like, so grateful for that. And, and you want to know what else? Like, even though I can't be with you physically in person, and even though I would love to be physically with a community, I got to say, I because I have people in my life like you, if I never met you and this is all I have, I'm so grateful. I I would take this any day of the week over a yeah. hundred friends that are surface level and not connected to me I and agree. me not connected to them or in a reciprocal relationship. So um, you know, I'm just in a very grateful space for where I'm at and I trust and know that beautiful things are coming because I'm setting those intentions. And so it's coming to me. I'm, and I'm ready for that, you know, so, so that's, that's how I feel about it. And, and so even if there is a little bit of like sadness pull, when I think about how I would love for that to be something now, that's really just confirmation for my body that, that, that it means something to me and that I am moving in the right direction. And, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm ready for that. <laughs> yeah. So, so there, there's that about, uh, and it's interesting uh, how we're all being guided towards the same place. Yeah, it is. It is. But no yeah. coincidence, of course. Yeah. And we will drop that place one day. Yeah. One day. We'll tell <laughs> you one day. Drop it. <laughs> but we are definitely being, like, guided towards each other and also towards we are building that community well. Yeah, yeah. We are building that. That is yeah. what this is about, is if you don't have access to somebody in your yeah. physical reality, and I was there for years Four years, even the studio that I was teaching at was very much like, no yeah. shade, love it, so grateful for that opportunity. I was one of two deeply spiritual practitioners there. And yeah. one of them, he was there once a week. He's like yeah. very like prominent in the Arizona yoga community. And so when I was really going through my awakening beginning of 2020 and awakening really just meaning like, lifting the veil of the perspectives that you once had in the yeah. past around your reality, around yourself, around your own thoughts and your own belief system. It's like an awakening, like your eyes open one day to a whole new reality. And so you're yeah. awakened to these new teachings. You're drawn to this new way of being and it can be really fucking scary. Yeah. And, and we'll talk more deeply about that. But to touch on the, the community being virtual, my community was essentially virtual. I started building my TikTok community and I attracted all of these like star light worker beings, like yeah. super spiritual people that would be like, I see you. I get you. I got oh, you. I love I'm that. I'm here I for love you. That. And yeah. so it started all virtually yeah. for me. Um, and you know, I would meet people that would come into my classes here and there. And that's how I would, I would, I would meet people here and there. But as far as like the beginning, the, the orientation, the origin of my, uh, access to spiritual community, it started mm -hmm. virtually through TikTok. And then I found this app, um, through like Aubrey Marcus, who is somebody that does kind of what we do it, it, at a grander scale. He's based in Austin. He's great. Um, but he has this app and this like a uh, program called fit for service. So I started downloading that app and I was like connecting with people through the app about plant medicine and all of these things. And so I started to really feel seen and supported energetically, yeah. even though it wasn't in the physical. Yeah. And I was truly grateful for that too. And I'm truly grateful for you. And even though I know I'm literally going to see you in a few months, um, yeah. but it's, it still does enough 
for you in that journey. So if you're feeling yeah. super alone, you can find cohorts yeah. and groups online and you can contact us. Yeah, and absolutely. Like, we are building that community for you as well. So you can be seen yeah. and heard and acknowledged and understood and helped. Yeah. And thanks for saying that too, because it really, this podcast for me, I have a lot of goals for it, but for sure, this is one that will mean a lot to me. I like, I, I want, I, having these conversations and speaking about the topics that we're speaking about, this is why it's so important to do it because people will hear that, you know, signal <laughs> that goes out and, and they'll come, you know, kind of like that, uh, build the dreams. Like, if you build it, they will come. Yeah. And I, I want that. I, I want to deeply connect with people and I want other people to feel really seen and supported in that way too, because yeah. it, 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 it literally makes me feel alive on top of so many other things that you talk about here. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just, I, I, I'm so looking forward to that. And we already have, you know, connected with some very amazing people. Yeah. And so all it's just, around the world. All around the world. Shout yeah. out to South Africa. Marrakesh. <laughs> Marrakesh. Shout out to yeah. England. I mean, Belgium. Our, Belgium. Yes. Yeah. Our podcast yeah. is downloading all around the world and we see you guys. Yeah. We're so grateful for you. And we're not yeah. just saying that. Like, yeah. We cannot wait to see what we build yeah. together because you are a part of this mission. Yeah. Your energy, your intention your prioritization of listening to us and subscribing and sharing and feeling into and absorbing what we are saying there would be none of this without you yeah we're here to remind you that every single individual on this planet whether you're listening to this or not you have a purpose yeah. you are meant to be here because you are here yeah so yeah, I agree. I love that. That was really beautiful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look at our. Yeah, you are. I know. I'm here for all the love bombs. Bombs of love. love. Bombs of love. Not love bombing, but bombs of love. <laughs> so, um, I want to know more about you, Mo. Okay. I want let's you to tell it. me and our listeners and people listening to this episode let's talk about spirituality. Why yeah. is it an essential aspect of our lives, of our show? And how did your journey begin? Yeah, so my journey began, and I shared a little bit about this earlier with you, uh, not in a way that I was aware of at the time. And so uh, really my journey began early um, with wanting to make people laugh. You know, I... Uh, I, there are a lot of reasons, but especially in the, the really traumatic times in my life, um, laughter was a really great way of redirecting. Okay. It was a really great way of me feeling a sense of control of yeah. if I can anticipate your feelings, like, okay, I can see things are changing for you. I can tell that because of this behavior, you're about to blow up or you guys are about to fight or, um, you know, whatever other kind of scary thing that felt hard for me to feel or witness. Um, it felt like a really great way to control what I thought was, I was controlling. I thought I was, you know, that, that's back when, you know, I thought those types of things worked, but it was my coping mechanism. And you were and sensitive it, and you and are I, sensitive. Yeah, and and, so, and and honestly, could I could feel the energy in the room changing. I could sense when things were were coming, and honestly, it worked a lot of times. If I could just get people to laugh, you know, uh, whoo, I just like, had a realization that I didn't think of before. Go for it. Um, when I couldn't make you laugh, I felt more obsessed with the idea of like you know, why couldn't I break through to that person? And I don't know that it so much felt like a failure on my part, but I, but I became really obsessed at an early age with making sure everybody felt happy, making sure everybody felt okay. And of course, back then it was to, you know, I, I didn't really learn healthy ways to do that. 
up yeah. until a few years ago. But that was, I thought redirection was the tactic that worked. Okay. And so that's really where it started for me was through the gift of, of laughter. And sensitivities and that anticipation of, yeah. and, and being in, in, let me know if you resonate with this because I resonate with you as yeah. well. I wouldn't say that I as identified as much with that like comic, but I'm a very funny yeah. individual as well. Yeah, you are. And yeah. I realize, and that comes out when I'm feeling really safe too. I was like super mm -hmm. funny last weekend. And <laughs> I realized, um, honestly within the last couple of weeks, like I have a lot of similarities there. And yeah that the environment in which I grew up in, and I feel like there's an, an alignment here for you, um, felt very unsafe. Yeah. I won't go into the level of abuse I experienced at a young age, but it was, it was pretty traumatic around three years old. And I think that... I think that is what bred my hypervigilance. Yeah. And also bred some of the gifts. Right? So hypervigilance meaning like mm -hmm. you know, there's there's so much chaos around you and that can just be chaos and people don't know how to deal with their emotions. Both of my parents were reactive and my brother and myself. Yeah. Reactivity through and through. Okay. So in order to avoid that, learning, okay, how do I be the light? Because everybody here is so yeah. dreary and so heavy and angry and they don't even realize they're being this way, but I realize it. And how can I be the light, right? How can I be the mediator? Yeah. How can I uplift this energy? And through humor, right? Through, yeah. I, I used to be like intentionally clumsy or do stupid shit or yeah, like yeah. just that's just Jamie. And they would laugh at me. Yeah, and I'm like, thank yeah. God I got you to laugh. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, just by being like the clumsy, crazy, out there, kind of annoying, loud one to redirect that energy. So yeah. I completely resonate with that. And in a sense, that breeds these gifts that we're talking about is like sensitivity to energy and learning to transmute that in a way that's a version of transmutation, right? Yeah. Transmutation meaning like transforming the energy in the room into something yeah. else. Mm -hmm. And so unconsciously we made that our mission yeah, to try to navigate the treacherous waters of our reality as a child. Yeah. And what does that do? That puts so much pressure yeah. on a kid. Oh, mm -hmm. I have to be the emotionally in tune, aware one. And I yeah. need to continuously redirect the energy so that people are happy in the household. Yeah. But, and on the, on the flip side of that, it also has given us many gifts. Yeah. We are, we, it started with hypervigilance bred out of trauma and chaotic environment. And it led into, okay, I realize I'm aware of other people's emotions. Yeah. I realize I'm aware of energies. I realize I'm starting to have visions. Right. Yeah. So it all had to happen for a really beautiful reason. Yeah. Uh, well, and I feel that way. I, I really do. There were, there were years of my life that I, I was living in a state of, um, how do I want to put this? I, I was creating by default. Maybe that's the best way to say it. Mm -hmm. And not, not being deliberate, not, not aware at all. I mean, it, it just, just, continuing to re repeat patterns and, and be in, you know, certain <laughs> relationships that were like, yeah. not right for right. me. And, um, you know, so yeah, I, I feel like all of these things have led me exactly to where I am right now. And I am so grateful. Mm -hmm. I am so forever grateful that I get to know what this feels like. Mm -hmm. I'm what so is grateful this? for the journey. This this feeling that I have in this moment today is just very alive. I feel very, woo, I feel very grateful for, um, I just feel so grateful for my life. I mean, 
yeah, I have things I want to do. I have some goals that I have yet to achieve. I also know that I am always going to be okay. I also yeah. know that I am safe. I'm in the most loving, supportive relationship that I could have never, I, I, I literally didn't think it existed. I, I really thought, but I didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there was a part of me who felt like what I thought was okay for me to expect from myself was impossible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not just in love, but in the relationships that I surrounded myself with. I didn't think it was possible because I was told by the world, whether it was verbally or an assumption, or I had uh, just decided to resonate with whatever the fuck that energy is. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and so, yeah. I just, fear. Um, it, yeah, fear. And so, but now I know that it's possible. I've seen that it's possible. You've shown me, Dave's shown me, you know, um, Anna Barnhill, my, my, my very first coach. I just, I feel very alive and very grateful. And, and, you know, yeah. So that's, so that's where I am. That's where I am today. Um, I forgot where I was getting a little bit, somewhere along the lines of I'm so grateful all of that happened. Because I've never felt this way in my life. And if today's the day it happens, hell yes. I can't wait for the rest of it. You know, I'm excited for the unfolding of what's to come because it's all very beautiful and all um, necessary for me to have, like you said, for these gifts to come online. (laughs) So, yeah. That feels like there's this sense of peace and presence and acceptance with your past. Yeah, I, I do feel that way. And it's funny, I, I've, I've had, um, I, I had a lot of guilt about lot and shame about certain decisions I made when I was hurting, you know, and, and people that I've hurt while I was hurting and didn't really know how to fix that. There was a part of me that felt like there was something else I needed to do to, like, to them for them, you know, people and I, cause, cause honestly, the embarrassing, for? yeah, like a freaking apology tour. Yeah, there yeah. are times, you know, that you want to go back and you change things, but you realize you can't. It's yeah. the people that are hurt along the way of of your journey to finding uh, the the everything that is you that exists, you know, the true and loving expression. that. Yeah, yeah, loving it rather than shaming it. And um, and so another part of my journey really has been um. I can't apologize to those people. And in fact, it's fucking selfish to try a little bit. That's my opinion. And if you need to apologize, whoever you are in the situation is different. That's okay. I know everybody's situations are different. Right. But for me, I realized that, um, that that's really not possible. And so, so that really felt like for me, one of the things that hung around for a really long time that made it hard for me to love myself fully, you know, because I couldn't change, you know, what I, ways I've hurt people and and that because I'm so sensitive and that's the last thing I want to do knowing that something I've done in my life hurts me has hurt me to my core and I've healed that okay. um and so so yeah uh again I don't really know why I told you that it felt very relevant <laughs> it is relevant because we're talking about yeah. the journey it's of, like trying to tie it back up and I'm like wait where am I going <laughs> I got you I got you it's it's the journey of your awakening right yeah yeah I think that was the last leg for me of like really loving myself it's, it's like hey forgive yourself for the hurt that you've caused because I know for a fact that me becoming who I am right now, and if I ever get to see these people that I hurt again, I hope that the apology comes in the form of, I worked on myself. Uh-huh. Because I know that I was out in the world hurting and hurting. And uh-huh. that's not me anymore. And uh, I, I I did a lot of work to get to that place yeah. for my for myself and for the world. Because, because I deserve it. And everyone that comes into contact with me, you deserve it too. Whether it's, it's that it, 
I know that I'm being kind to you and bringing the, the energy into your experience that helps light you up and, and helps you realize that this is also possible for you. Or it's just like, hey, I'm glad, I'm glad she's not running around, <laughs> you know, yeah. of hurting people. Um, yeah. even though probably on some level there, there, you can't, you can't control any of that. It's out of your control. But I do right. know that this is the right direction for me. Yeah, and I think that this is a huge, I'm glad that you brought this up. I'm glad that mm-hmm. you're, you're expressing this because this is also a big part of my journey and it's a big part of yeah. people's journey who are ready to awaken, which can yeah. mean so many different things. It can mean like starting to do the work on yourself, starting to take ownership for your life, starting to, like I said earlier, change and embody this new way of being or you're curious about yeah. it. You want to be a better person and you want to do something good for this world. Yeah. Right. And so I had that same phase. I was so sensitive from such a young age that I had no idea how to work through those emotions. And I've said this many times before, it's not until the last few years, even though the last few years did encompass some traumas, some perspective changes is how I look at them now. Um, But I had a lot of pain and a lot of, intense events happen majority of my life. And so the only way I knew how to cope because I was so rebellious, um, I would do stupid shit. You know, I would get into trouble. I would drink a lot. I would get into trouble with the law. I'd get kicked out of school. I would just do all of these things. And yes, I hurt people in the process. Yes, I hurt people in the process. And I want to talk about that pivotal moment for you and for me. When we were like, shit, mm-hmm. we need change. So let's talk about that for you. Take me on that journey. Yeah. When did that happen? Um, so there were two really big moments that I'll say were pivotal. Uh, yeah. Because one was about uh, mental clarity and, and working on the mind. <laughs> I don't know. I'm doing my hands. Um, so one was about my mind and then the other became more about the spiritual journey and, and, you know, kind of where I am today. Yeah. Uh, the first happened, um, this was back in, um, 2016, 2017. I went to see a therapist for the first time I was in. Let's just put it this way. I had, uh, endured a series of traumas probably throughout my life that were just really honestly, I never dealt with any of my traumas That's up it. until 2017. That's I mean, it. and, and that was the beginning. Like it's, it right. continues to like, <laughs> you know, we yeah. continue the process with your help. Of course, Danny, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Of course. Um, of course. and, um, happy to. So yeah, seeing the therapist for the first time, I was in a, working environment that was crazy um it was it, you know you want to talk about nervous system wound as tight as it gets uh-huh. i was uh you know i was in a lot of denial also about how not okay i was you know uh-huh. i just kept moving just kept going just keep producing you know like what i was talking about earlier oh she's so quiet <laughs> she comes She's, she's so crying, but she's getting so much done. We love her. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and Just so that she should. Yes. And, and so <laughs> that was a really big moment for me was going to the therapist for the first time. Because I'll say this much. On a level, and hey, family, I'm not judging you, but on a level, my family, I felt like, I'm not going to name names, and so if you don't resonate with this, I'm not talking about you. Um, there was a little bit of an understanding that that is for weak people. Mm. You know what I mean? And so also speaking to the sensitive girl who's like, I've basically just wanted to be close to everyone and love everyone my whole life <laughs> and yeah. make everybody happy. Cancer. I'm like, what about all the things that hurt inside me? You know, um, bury it. Uh, so <laughs> this is the first time that I was like, uh, bury it. <laughs> yeah, I decided to like start, like I started with like a little sandbox shovel, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got this. And, um, and, and so that, that was huge for me seeing a therapist. And then the next big pivotal moment is when I started working with a coach. It, she changed my life. Um, I love her. I, of course I love you. I love Mac. I've worked with several coaches actually. You know that, but, um, yeah. 
But Same. but I big shout out to Anna Barnhill. This this woman is literally an angel on this earth. She she guided me after so I started working it's almost it's almost I know that you're not gonna be like, oh well this is no coincidence. I was guided to her from my future self, who's like, she's it for you, this is how it starts. And um and before I experienced a really big trauma in my life, I started working with her and then wow. she she helped me actually work through two after that that were really huge moments in my life that that rocked me to my core and my honestly and, and she was my coach in my deepest point of depression that I've ever experienced in my life wow points where I was literally I don't know if I've ever even, yeah you know this I'm pretty sure you know this but I never knew what it was like to I never really knew what people meant when they said things like um I thought about killing myself, you know, Um, because I thought, well, I always have wanted to be alive. I've always felt like I want to be alive, but I was thinking about, and so I guess I should say warning for those who might be triggered by this type of conversation. Um, You know, I I didn't know that was because I didn't actually want to do it. You know what I mean? I didn't realize that I, I thought about, ways that I could kill myself a lot at that mm-hmm. time. But I didn't actually want to go through with it, so I thought it was fine. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I didn't realize that that's not okay. And that's mm. that's an act and what's so funny is I have so I have a a bachelor's degree in psychology. Mm-hmm. I have a master's degree in human resource development. I know people. Like mm-hmm. this is like classic. Um, and I didn't see it in myself. I, I didn't, because I wasn't aware, I didn't have a good spiritual hygiene practice. This was the beginning of my journey. Yeah. And, and it, and, and it opened my eyes. And, uh, you know, uh, when I say she saved my life, I don't mean it in a little flippant way or even in a way that I thought I was really on the verge. I didn't feel like that. Okay. Um, but she definitely, she helped me understand how to understand myself. She helped me become aware. She, or at least opened me up to even more awareness and even more awareness that I continue to have and start me on that path where, um, where now today I have made a commitment to devote my life to this and I train to become a life coach and finish my courses over the summer. And I've been studying this for years and, and now I'm ready to help other people do it because it absolutely changed my life for the better. And I know it even, and I will say there have been lots of moments, and I know you this. I know you this. I know, I know you this. this. I know you this, girl. <laughs> I know you know this, but, um, you know, there are obviously lots of hard times when you're going through this. So I'm not pretending like it's all love and sunshine because right. there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack and there's, there's a lot of work that's going to make you really uncomfortable and, um, yeah. and even beyond comfortable, you'll feel crazy at times potentially. I mean, that's yeah. just been my journey. Maybe yours isn't that way, but, um, that, you know, and that's oh, kind of mine what, is that what, way. 100%. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll still have moments that I'm like, wait, if I love, am I crazy? Uh, is, uh, is this, a, is this a panic attack? Is this a spiritual awakening or, yeah. um, but, uh, yeah. So, so that, that, uh, led me to, to where I am today in kind of a nutshell, um, thank you to so my much spiritual for touching journey. on that. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, you didn't interrupt. Thank you for asking the question. Um, yeah. I, I'm ready to dive into your story. How about you? Well, girl, <laughs> I was thinking about what I wanted to share because I have a very similar instance that was pivotal for me. Yeah. And, um, y'all, this is a heavy one and I knew it was going to be heavy today. I knew it was going to be heavy today. This is so essential that we get this out here. Okay. Um, with the level of awareness that I have now, I look back and I realize a lot of the people, including members, sorry about that. A lot of the people, including members of my family were having the really dark thoughts And I was also having them because of that. And then I would realize like when I would be separate from certain individuals, I wouldn't have 
thoughts similar to you. I mm. wouldn't have like, I want to die. Like I want yeah. this to be over. I'm over this because my life was, and, and this might be also triggering for people to hear by my choice. It was suff- insufferable. I experienced an incredible amount of suffering because I focused on the bad. I focused on the trauma. I focused on the betrayal. I focused on the negativity and I was only speaking negative to myself. Yeah. So I was in this mental state starting from a very young age, probably to about the time I was 20 and maybe a little bit after that, um, of, having those thoughts on and off. Mm. There were a couple of times where I attempted to self harm and it was very like, it was very, and I can say this looking back at myself, it was very much a a, a, a call for attention. Yeah. Like I knew I would get the attention and the love or, or the at least thought or energy that I wanted from people. If I like cut myself a little bit and I know that sounds like I'm saying it from a very light place, but I'm incredibly healed now. So I can look back and, and have this perspective of like this, these were my unconscious thoughts that I now see with my conscious awareness of who I am today. Yeah. And it got to this point. Um, I'll say this, all of my significant relationships with men have had some level of abuse in them. Mm. all of them whether that's physical verbal or sexual or spiritual (laughs) yeah Um, and yeah yeah. and there was this one ex that I met when I was 18 years old and I'm I'm grateful for him because he showed me yoga and he showed me nutrition Mm. and we'll talk about that in a second but he dedicated um like monogamously he was monogamous to me for three months of the the whole three years that we were oh my gosh wow intertwined wow and there was there was immense verbal abuse there but i was so young and so naive and he was this beautiful older man and i was just there was this like there was something spiritually going on because i would see i would see shit even at that age not yeah, my past yeah. lives or anything, but just like this it was probably the, 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 the like alchemical reaction that you get when you're like super physically attracted to somebody's like pheromones. Right. Mm, I know what you mean girl. Yeah. And he was also like <laughs> an acid dealer and he was doing acid all the time. So oh there was my like God. that trippy, he was the first person that gave me LSD and, and I had many realizations and revelations on LSD. Um, wow. and we can talk about psychedelics in a, in a on this one as well. And it got to this point where I was like, I have nothing, I have no one. Um, I don't know what to do. And so I took a bunch of pills and I drank a lot and I passed out on the floor. And this has to do with the level of, spiritual awareness and awakening that I have now at 27 years young. Yeah. This is a huge part of my story and it has to do a lot with my ability to tap into other realms. Mm -hmm. So my soul left my body. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I literally remember I have, I had a cat and a dog at the time. I remember my soul left my body. I was my soul. Okay. And I was looking down at my body and I was going to like touch the light switches and open the doors and like things wouldn't open. But then if I like pushed hard enough, like things would knock over. And then I remember seeing my cat and she was like terrified of me because I was like this energy. Right. And I remember all of this so clearly. And then I like walked back to my room or my soul or the essence of me or whatever the fuck it was. But I was like on the other side, but also still connected to the 3D. So we have an ethereal cord that connects our soul to our physical body. We have like one ethereal cord. 
So when you astral travel, meaning your soul leaves your body, you're still connected by one sliver of energy. And so it was like my subconscious was like, not yet. Yeah. And I snapped back into my body, threw everything up onto the ground. My body was like, oh my God. Yet. Threw it all yeah. up. Didn't need to go get my sewing pump pumped or anything. And got into bed, slept that night. Woke up the next morning in a completely different perspective. Wow. Oh, my God. Of, I have to change. Yeah. I am meant to be here. There is no other direction that I can go in now. I have seen the other side. I have connected to the other side. Yeah. I have almost been there. And I brought all of that, all of those gifts and all of that beauty and all of that connection back with me to okay. this physical body. And that's really what started like me realizing, hold on, these thoughts weren't mine. You know, I didn't have to do this alone. My, my roommate at the time had many mental health issues and I was taking that on as well. And mm. that's why people are attracted to me because my soul has that strength of I'll carry it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I've been there mm -hmm. and I had to start decoding that and detoxing that and releasing that. And that was such a pivotal moment for me to recognize I'm supposed to be here. And there's yeah. something really powerful in what I experienced and I need to look at myself and I need to start healing and I need to start. And that was right before I went on my yoga teacher training journey to Thailand. And I know that's, this is going to be really scary and sad and whatever perspective you have in listening to that story, but I need to fucking own it. Yeah. It's a part of the reason I'm such a powerful leader and guide and healer and teacher right now. And yeah. I never, I can't prevent what's meant to happen. And if I was meant to leave in that moment, I would have. But I want you to know if you're having those thoughts, there is another way. Mm -hmm. Because I snapped back and no, not everything was healed. I had to start doing the work. Yeah. So I got into yoga. I started, I stopped drinking for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I started removing those. I was like, okay, I'm so aware now <laughs> of like what I need to change. Because I had that major wake up call that I need to dive into it all and I need to go for it. And I believe that it is possible for me to heal myself naturally. I've, I've always rejected medicine. And that's another conversation. I, like I said, now I do think there's a time and a place, but as far as medications, as far as my parents wanting to medicate me a, a large majority of my life, um, you know, being told that I'm all these things, I was like, there has to be another way. Yeah. And so I started throwing myself fully into the practice of yoga and meditation and stillness and healing through nutrition. And that was a, probably there was always that spiritual inc inclination in that pool, but that was probably the biggest yeah, yeah for me. Yeah. Wow. I didn't realize that. So you were like, you were not officially gone, but you like, weren't here either i had a near-death experience yeah 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 i guess i didn't <laughs> realize that fully well thank you for sharing that that's yeah, a there are multiple it, so. yeah it's you you that is those are so, so many so many things happening all at once for you mm -hmm. and how old were you 20 wow Very. wow yeah yeah, it was a few months into being 20. It's a lifetime ago. It, sure. It's a complete lifetime Many ago. lifetimes, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Many, many lifetimes. I have not had an issue with those types of thoughts since. Yeah. And I 
a part of me kind of feels like I snagged something from the other side. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what because a lot of my upbringing is blurry. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm waiting to find, or I'm waiting for the healer and for the the guide that mm-hmm. ends up always finding me, just like you were saying about your coach, right? Yeah, I'm waiting, yeah. I'm waiting for that one person to be like, this is what happened, and this is your soul's essence. So yeah. I know, I know I'm still me, but it's like, yeah. maybe I, maybe I gained something from that. I mean, clearly yeah. I gained something from that, but like yeah. spiritually, energetically. Um, so it's, it's you really feel changed. Like something is either like you have a new, there's something new about you. Yeah. Yeah. That's Definitely. cool. It was a complete 180. So, yeah. Wow. You know, but, but you brought this up in the last podcast. You talked about the pain teacher and I just love that. What a beautiful way to explain it. Um, you know, that you had been guided very far or that you had, you had guided yourself really far up the path or however you want to look at it, you know? Yeah. Um, and this is no judgment. This is just using the example you shared last week and, and just being very far off. And I say this because I have been very far off my path. And, and multiple times in my life um and 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 had those moments where it's like you know you you're you're rocked to your core and yep. and now everything's different and you see now you hadn't seen yeah. before you denied seeing it maybe before or 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 maybe you just you didn't have the ability for one reason or the other but you were changed forever because of it and it was potentially a very essential part of your journey Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And to be at this point, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. I am such a hard-headed, stubborn motherfucker that I needed to get bitch slapped by the universe (laughs) multiple times. Yeah. Some people just learn the hard way. I think a I lot of people that. learn the hard way. I resonate. <laughs> right? And yeah. I'm somebody, like I've said many times, is I like to explore my edges. So I yeah. overdo things. Same. And, and that pattern is being surely, slowly but surely released. I don't need to overdo things anymore. It's I'm, I've yeah. gained a lot of grace and softness in the last couple of years. But not my younger self. Yeah. She said, Oh, you want a drink? We're going to get blacked out every night. Oh, you want to, you know, I always pushed myself until I got to that point of like, you're going too far. Here's some symptoms change. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. You know, when, when you were talking earlier, it made me feel like what happened for me and let me know if you resonate. Yeah. Fan theory here. Um, <laughs> that, uh, so we weren't, I know for a fact, I was not in touch spiritually at all. My sensitive side was squashed. My goal was laugh, happy, laugh, happy. I mean, you want to talk about, uh, fake positivity. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> it, it was, it was like, do you, you know, it was coming from a very sincere place. Um, but it, but everything was like you know suppress emotions put on a show suppress emotions put on a show and but but the same with you I would find these times in my life to really find my edges hard like really hard and do dangerous things or do yep. scary things because I wanted I I wasn't feeling what I really like the, I wasn't feeling the healed feeling things I didn't know right. how I didn't have the language I didn't really have a lot of examples. I didn't have any examples. I'm going to put it to you that way. I had no examples of how to live the life I'm currently leading. None. And so what I did was try to find ways to feel alive. And, um, and so, yeah, I feel like, I feel like it's, you know, we, we were, we were looking, we were searching. We were searching for what we found. And, un, and I don't even want to say unfortunately. And, Unfortunately for some, <laughs> that's how they want to look at it in their perspective. Um, 
that could have looked like and been experienced by a lot of people, including ourselves, as a very messy journey that had a lot of pain um, inflicted on ourselves. So, yeah, we had pain that was inflicted um, on us or we were in an environments and experienced pain because of unhealed people around us. We didn't know what to do with these really, really big, sensitive, loving parts of ourselves. We explored really hard and, and learned a lot of really painful lessons. And I'm, and I, I, and I love hearing, I love hearing that story. Although my heart does break for that younger you, I'm oh, so, yeah. look how strong she was, you know, yeah. and look, look, if, and I, and I, and I like to remind myself of that too for, for you and me and everybody. Like, look, look at everything we've done to get to this point and, and if you're on a journey at, at where where it's still really hard and painful, or or maybe you're just at a painful moment, because you really you'll learn that that's what those are. They're painful moments, and there's a lot of opportunity right now to learn that that's how you're feeling right now, and you have a lot of support. Um, I didn't know that back then, you know, and I Same. didn't really know I didn't really know what to do. And um, how beautiful is it now for you to know that when you're going through something really challenging and hard, that you have as many people as you want to love you and hold you and, yeah. um, and help you navigate any situation yeah. that you may find yourself in. You have said in, in, in that, in all of that, you've said so many beautiful things that have resonated with me so much. And, and to hear your, your perspective of, I did a lot of dangerous things because I want to, f I wanted to feel alive. I wanted yeah. to figure out what it meant to feel alive. We're young. We're curious. We're fearless. We, we are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you and I are crazy in many different yeah. ways. Not, not in the same way, not in the yeah. same way anymore. And we'll talk about that. But something came to me as you were speaking about like do, like putting ourselves in dangerous situations to feel alive or that rush or to run from what we were really feeling, right? That adrenaline rush, that yeah. cortisol spike. I know. I cut it off right as we were about to find out what that realization is that Danny had and what came to her while I was speaking about my thoughts on the entire experience that we both had some parallels on. But you'll just have to wait to find out what she has to say along with our reflections of the overall experience sharing this with you next week. We'll see you Thursday.